dear students let us solve few questions based on movement of force the first question the movement of force of 10 newton about a fixed point o is 5 newton meter so let's take a fixed point o and uh, let's say you have 10 10 newton of force acting on it at a distance of d so movement of force is defined as the perpendicular distance and the force what what we have so here it's a 5 newton meter equals to distance d and force is 10 newton so newton newton get cancelled out so d equals to 5 meters divided by 10 that's a 1 by 2 meters that's a 0 0.5 meters so d is 0 0.5 meter that's the answer one more question a nut is opened by a wrench a nut is opened by a wrench of length 10 centimeters so this you have to write convert into meters first because length should be in meters so that's a uh, 0 0.1 meters if the least force required f equals to 5 newton find the moment of force so moment of force is nothing but f into l or force into distance that's a 5 newton into 0 0.1 meter that's a 0 0.5 newton meter is the moment of force needed to turn the nut one more question a wheel of diameter which means this entire length entire length diameter d let's say is 2 meters so radius so diameter here is b a radius that's a uh, a o r o b equals to 1 meters now we have a force f which is equals to 2 newton applied at b calculate moment of force about center o about center of o means this point so moment of force about o means force into radius because this distance is radius what we have so force is 2 newton distance is 2 newton meters that's a 4 newton meter and moment of force about point a equals to force what we have and two times of radius because the total distance we have to take now that's nothing but diameter that's nothing but uh, 2 newton into diameter is 2 meters all together it's a 4 newton the sorry this is uh, radius right radius is 1 meter so this can't be 4 newton meter it, this has to be 2 newton meter and now diameter is 2 meters that makes sense so now that's equals to 4 newton meter one more question good question in this we need to tell the direction of direction of uh, movement of force in both the cases whether it is about o or whether it is about a the rotation is like this which means it's a clockwise direction so the answer here moment of force is 2 newton meter clockwise and 4 newton meter also clockwise yeah let's take this the diagram shows two phases two forces f1 is 5 newton and f2 is 3 newton acting at a point a and b of rod pivoted at o okay this is the pivoted point such that oa is 2 meters ob is 4 meters now 
calculate moment of force F1 about O. F1 about O means the distance is 2 meters, force is 5 newtons. That's equals to 10 newton meter. And as moment of force is a vector, we have to mention the direction. So that's the direction is anti-clockwise. So direction is anti-clockwise. Now, moment of force F2 about O. Moment of force F2 about O. The force is 3 Newton and uh, 4 meters. That's a 12 Newton meter in clockwise. In clockwise. Now, total momentum. Total moment of two forces equals to 12 Newton meter in clockwise plus 10 Newton meter in anti-clockwise. So you can write this one as together it's a 2 Newton meter clockwise because 12 is more than 10 so 12 minus 10 12 minus 10 directly you can uh, subtract and the value here is 2 and the clockwise is more than anti-clockwise so this is equivalent to uh, something like this with uh, 2 Newton meter sorry clockwise it's not anti-clockwise clock and downwards so like this we can solve next question two forces each magnitude 10 Newton acts vertically upwards and downwards respectively at the two ends A and B of uniform rod of length 4 meter which is pivoted at the midpoint O as shown in the figure. Determine the magnitude of resultant moment of forces. So moment of force 1 equals to force into distance. So distance from the point of pivoted nothing but 2 meters and uh, this one is clockwise. So this is equals to 20 Newton meter clockwise and moment of force 2 equals 2. This is also 10, neta, 10 Newton into 2 meters. Because from the pivoted point, we have to take the perpendicular distance. That's a 2 meters. So again, this is also clockwise. Altogether, it's a 20 Newton meter clockwise. As both are in the same direction of clockwise, we can add them straight away. That's a 40 Newton meter clockwise. 40 Newton meter clockwise. That's a total. Or this is a concept of couple. Couple means two forces acting per, uh, perpendicular. So, so now couple is nothing but one of the forces into perpendicular distance, nothing but four meters. One of the forces is 10 Newton. The, uh, the gap between the forces is 4 meters, that's a 40 Newton meter and of course both are acting along clock act, uh, clockwise direction. That's why we can solve in this way also, either in this way or in this way, in both the methods you can solve, which are both correct. One more question. Figure shows two forces, each of magnitude 10 Newton acting at the points A and B at separation of 50 centimeters in opposite directions. Calculate the resultant moment of two forces about point A. Now two forces point A. So total moment of force about A equals to resultant moment of two forces about point A. That's what we are doing. So now point there is no perpendicular distance between point A and the force. So which means 
force is 10 newton but where is the distance there is a perpendicular distance so it's a zero meters which means you have to write zero newton meter and about a because of the other force now the other force is acting at a distance of 50 centimeter and what is the force of that 50 newton so once again this is interesting 10 newton of force acting at a distance of 50 centimeter convert 50 centimeters into meters this is 0 0.1 0 0.5 0 0.5 meters so that's equals to 5 newton meter and it is acting downwards which means it's a clockwise 5 newton meter clockwise now let's see about b now for about b the force 10 newton is acting at a distance of 50 centimeter so about b total total moment of force equals to this is the point the perpendicular distance of this force is 50 centimeters so 50 centimeter into force is 10 newton so 0 0.5 meters into 10 newton that's a 5 newton meter and the direction of that direction of rotation is clockwise so this is about a b because of this 10 newton now what i want to this 10 newton this 10 newton is acting along the point itself there is no gap between point and the arrow there is no gap at all that's why it's a zero so the answer here is 5 newton meter clockwise now o is situated exactly at the middle of the two forces now o is somewhere here exactly at the middle so a you can write upwards and b is acting downwards so nothing but this is a couple couple means the total moment of force total moment of force any individual force that's a 10 newton 10 newton into perpendicular distance that's a 50 centimeter that's a 10 newton into 0 0.5 meters that's equals to 5 newton meter and the direction both are acting in the same direction that's a clockwise the same question you can write even in a different way the same answer you can give in a different way from o you take uh, 10 newton plus from o you take 10 newton so you add these two then also you get 5 newton meter in clockwise either either method you can choose any one method you can choose a steering wheel of diameter 0 0.5 meter a steering wheel let's say wheel like this diameter this gap total gap is 0 0.5 meter is rotated anti-clockwise something like that by applying two forces each of magnitude 5 newton so what i'll do is i'll read read draw this so let's say the wheel is like this and two forces each magnitude 5 newton uh, how this is rotating anti-clockwise rotation so this is how it's rotating which means the force should act like this then only you have anti-clockwise now draw a diagram to show application of forces so this is how we can show the diagram force force 0 0.5 meters now calculate moment of force applied is it this is not a this is a couple So moment of force 
moment of force here is nothing but any individual force as a 5 newton into into the perpendicular distance 0 0.5 meter uh, that's a 2.5 newton meter this is the answer on the direction direction in fact they already mentioned it's an anti-clockwise direction next a meter rule is pivoted and it's a midpoint so let's take a meter rule and pivoted at midpoint a weight of 50 gram force is suspended at one of the end it one of the end so 50 gram force where should a weight of 100 gram force suppose suspended to keep rule horizontal so definitely we have here moment of force in um, anti-clockwise direction so now to balance it the other force should act in a clockwise direction that's the first logic let's take a force 100 gf acting at a distance of x now clockwise midpoint right so this is 50 centimeter or half of the meter 0 0.5 meter now clockwise rotation equals to anti-clockwise rotation or we have to equate clockwise rotation clockwise uh, moment equals to anti-clockwise moment so now by equating what we get 0 0.5 meter into 50 gf equals to x into 100 gf so now 100 gf 50 gf cancel out so x equals to 0 0.5 meter divided by 2 x equals to 0 0.5 meter is 100 divided by 2 centimeters of course 50 centimeter by 2 x equals to 25 centimeters so that's the answer so if you hang 100 gf at 25 centimeter then we can balance the scale meter scale a uniform meter rule balances horizontal in a knife edge placed at 58 centimeter mark when a weight of 50 gram force suspended from one end it's a very good question you have a scale like this exactly here you'll have 50 now we have balanced somewhere here at 58 centimeters so this this length is 58 centimeters now on from another end you have hanged 20 gf force so this is a ray diagram sorry this is a diagram we can draw now draw a diagram of the arrangement so this is how it's looking like now what we should know here is if you hang if you hang a scale from the center of mass of the scale center of mass of the scale we will have weight so so which means exactly here from the middle of the scale we have we will have weight of the scale weight of the scale is a force now this is equivalent to you have a pivoted point let's say that's a zero and uh, weight acts in the anti-clockwise direction and uh, 20 gf acts in clockwise direction so by equating we can get the condition so now what is the gap here what we have that's uh, 8 centimeters the gap what we have here is uh, 100 minus 58 that's a 42 centimeters so straight away we can balance them so we can write the equation so weight into 8 centimeter equals to 20 gf Okay, 20 GF 
that's what they gave in the question into the distance 42 centimeters you, you need not convert into meters because they cancel each other left side right side centimeters so uh, uh, two four times two five times sorry this is ten times two ten times and then uh, two two times two five times this is uh, two twenty one times so weight equals to 5 into 21 gf that's a 5 10 gf so this is the weight of the scale let's do one more question a uniform meter rule balances horizontal and a knife edge placed at oh just now we did it okay the diagram below shows a uniform bar supported at the middle point O. A weight of 50 GF is placed at a distance of 40 centimeters. Mm -hmm. How can you balance a bar with a weight of 80 GF? Now weight of the bar acting exactly at the middle here itself so it will not affect. So from the point of rotation we have 40 GF at a distance of uh, 40 centimeters and the other side other side at what distance we don't know how much we have to hang we have to hang 80 gf so now you have uh, anti-clockwise moment of force equals to clockwise moment of force this moment of force also called as torque so anti-clockwise torque equals to clockwise torque. Just equate them, you'll get the answer. So 40 GF into 40 centimeter equals to 80 GF into X. So this is two times. So X equals to 20 centimeters. So at 20 centimeter, we have to hang uh, how much? 80 GF. So one more question. So we have a uniform meter rule placed on a fulcrum at its midpoint zero having a weight of 40 GF. Okay, a 10 centimeter mark. So now what is the gap here what we have? The gap here is uh, 40 centimeters and 20 gf is hang at 10 centimeter which means this gap is 10 20 30 40 centimeters now is the meter rule is in equilibrium for equilibrium anti-clockwise moment of force should equals to clockwise moment of force if you calculate that 40 GF into 40 centimeter equals to 40 cent centimeter into 20 GF. So definitely this is, they are not equal. So that's a 1600 GF centimeter, 800 cent GF centimeter. So which means they are not equal, which is more this uh, anti-clockwise is more so definitely it will rotate in this particular direction so in this uh, anti-clockwise anti-clockwise it will turn now how can the rule be brought in equilibrium by using additional weight of 40 gf now this is interesting so we can use 40 gf somewhere here let's say that's a x is a distance 40 gf is the force now x into 40 gf should equate the difference of these two values so that's a 800 gf cm why i took difference because that's an effective one 
so now gf gf 0 0 4 20 so x we need to hang at 20 centimeters from the o which means 20 means 10 20 so exactly at 70 centimeters so length x is the length from o 20 centimeters of length you have to go so where you have to hang exactly if you go from from o 20 centimeters where you will get you will get exactly at 70 so that's the answer when a boy weighing 20 G kgf sits at one end of a four meter long seesaw it gets depressed at this end mm -hmm. something like this let's say and the boy is here so it came down so how much force 20 kgf so what is this uh, length two meters two meters how can it he brought to horizontal by a man of weight 40 kgf let's say 40 kgf is a force we need to apply at a distance of x now by equilibrium condition 20 kgf into 2 meters equals to 40 kgf into x meters now 20 kgf will cancel out 2 and uh, and this 2 to cancel out so x equals to 1 meter so this is the distance from the center we need to hang such that or we need to make the man to sit so that uh, it will come to horizontal position the physical balance has its arms of length 60 centimeters and 40 centimeters so something like this you have let's say so this is uh, not exactly but something like that so this is 60 centimeters and let's say this is 40 centimeters what weight kept on the pan of longer arm so here let's say the W we kept so that it will balance 100 gram force on the other pan so 60 centimeter into w equals to 40 centimeter into 100 gf so now centimeter centimeter gone and uh, zero zero gone so two three times two two times so w equals to 200 gf by three okay so that's about 66.666 and so on gf we get approximately this is 66.67 gf a very good question try to understand the question the diagram in the figure shows a uniform meter school weighing meter rule weighing 100 gram force pivoted at its center if a scale is pivoted at center, its weight acts from this point only. So it neither causes clockwise or anti-clockwise rotations. It will it will not cause anything. Two weights, 150, 250 GFs hang from the point A, point B. Okay, point A, point B. And the length 40, 20. Total anti-clockwise moment about O. So this is anti-clockwise moment, total anti-clockwise moment, the first one is 150 GF into 40 centimeters, that's about 60, 0, 0 GF CM and second one, total clockwise moment, so this one clockwise moment which means 250 gf into 20 centimeters so that's 250 into 2 that's a 500 one more zero gf centimeters 
so this is uh, clockwise this is anti clockwise now a difference of anti clockwise and clockwise so difference how much that's a uh, 1000 gf centimeter and which direction it's a anti clockwise next the distance from o where 100 gf weight should be placed to the balance so let's say the weight we have to keep 100 gf at a distance of x why this side because this this side is more so how much it should equate we should equate to 1000 gf centimeter to 100 gf with x so two zeros two zeros gf gf so x equals to 10 centimeters so from o you have to hang here at a gap of 10 centimeters so you can say 10 centimeter a 10 centimeter of right side right side we need to hang okay one more question a uniform meter rule of weight 10 kg sorry 10 gf pivoted at zero mark so his zero mark is here this is 50 centimeter and this is 100 centimeters now what moment of force depress the rule so for a uniform scale the center of mass will act at 50 centimeters so here its entire weight will act so this is equal into as if you have a scale of 50 centimeter and the weight acts at the center of the scale so now what movement is that so weight is 10 gf so moment of force is 10 gf 10 gf into 50 centimeters that's a 500 gf centimeter which what direction is this this is clockwise direction how can you made horizontal by applying a least force least force means we have to apply moment of force at maximum length because for a constant moment of force f into l we have so f is inversely proportional to l so least force if you want to apply you have to apply a force as far as possible so where is that so we have to apply exactly at the end of the scale so which is exactly 500 gf centimeter clockwise equals to uh, the force the least force into 100 centimeters now centimeter centimeter 100 this is 5 so f equals to 5 gf so if you apply 5 gf of, GF of force at 100 centimeters as shown in this diagram the scale can brought to horizontal a uniform half meter rule can be balanced at 29 centimeter mark a uniform half meter rule so you have a rule like this 0 and 50 centimeters why it's a 50 because half meter rule where we can balance at 29 centimeter this is 25 exactly at the middle one of the side you have hung 20 grams so let's say which side they didn't say from its one end let's say this side you have 20 gram force now now what force is acting on the scale the weight of the scale will act exactly from the center that's a 25 centimeters now at 29 mark it was balanced somewhere here 
so this is 29 centimeters so if you redraw this diagram so like this we have so this is 20 gram from 29 to 50 so what is that gap uh, 21 centimeters on the other side the weight of the scale acts acts at a distance of 4 centimeter because 29 minus 25 4 centimeters now anti-clockwise equals to clockwise so w into 4 centimeter equals to 20 gram into 21 centimeters you may ask you may ask me 20 gram is not force so force on 20 gram is 20 gram f gf force on 20 grams equals to 20 gram force or even we can write in terms of uh, grams or mass because you see here one side you have weight the other side you have 20 g 20 gram so 20 gram so what i will do in a way is force on 20 gram equals to mg that's equals to 20 gram into g it's nothing but 20 gram force This is nothing but 20 gram force which means you have to write here instead of gm you can write gf 20 gram force now if you equate what you get weight into 4 centimeter equals to 20 gf into 21 centimeters so this is centimeter centimeter five times so W equals to 5 into 21 gram force. So 5, 10 GF. So, so this is the weight, weight of the half scale. If you want mass of the half, half mass of the scale, weight of the scale is 105 GF. So mass of the scale is 105 G, nothing but grams. okay very good question we have last two questions i think a uniform meter rule of mass 100 gram is balanced and a fulcrum at a mark of 40 centimeter by suspending an unknown mass m at mark 20 centimeters so let's take the scale middle point so at 20 centimeters so this is zero so from 20 centimeters we have unknown mass m so this is 20 centimeters a uniform meter rule of 100 gram is balanced at the mark of 40 centimeters so here it was balanced where you have 40 centimeters now where is the weight acting on the scale the weight always acts from the center of the scale so that's a w so from the fulcrum let's redraw the diagram so this is w and this gap the w acts exactly at 50 centimeters that's the midpoint of the scale so which means this is 10 centimeters and now m is acting at a distance of 20 centimeters so this gap is 20 centimeters now to which side the rule will tilt if the mass m is moved to mark 10 centimeter mm -hmm. okay first we need to calculate m here so by balancing both 20 centimeter 
into m equals to 10 centimeter into w this is two times so w equals to two times of m uh, okay so w is what here w is so one side here once again <laughs> W is weight, M is mass. So M is a place, M you have to write Mg. So Mg you have to write because Mg is weight. That's a unit of weight. So if you write now, weight is so uniform meter rule of 100 grams. So weight is 100 gram into G equals to 2mg g g cancel 250 times so m equals to 50 gram so mass of the object is 50 gram so now this is uh, 50 gram now to which side the rule will tilt if the mass m is moved to mark 10 centimeter so as I have erased the diagram, let's draw once again. So this is the diagram you have. So M is acting at 20 centimeters. 40 centimeters is a place where you balance. So 50 centimeter where weight will act. So we have just now calculated M is 50 gram. So now what will happen if to which side the rule will tilt if the m is moved to mark 10 centimeters now if you bring all the way this one to here what will happen you are increasing length so what will happen to moment of force moment of force is force into length if you increase length, moment of force also will increase. So as a result, it will tilt in anti-clockwise direction. It will tilt into the anti-clockwise direction. Now what is the resultant moment now? So resultant moment, you can calculate it as Initially, this is at equilibrium when this was at 20 centimeters. Now you have moved by an extra 10 centimeter, which means L is 10 centimeter. How much uh, force you have applied? Force is mg. That's a 50 gram F or 50 gram into F. You can say it's. 50 GF is the force we have applied additionally by sliding moment of force how much we have applied 50 GF into 10 centimeter that's a 500 GF centimeter how can you balance by another mass of 50 gram so let's say another mass of 50 gram attached or hanged the other side by at a distance of x which means this is equals to x into 50 gf so we have equate now gf gf cancel out 50 10 times so at what distance x equals to 10 centimeters from the center so which side that's a right side so right side of fulcrum and this is at 10 centimeters so 10 cm from fulcrum is exactly at 50 cm. So we need to hang exactly at 50 cm. How much mass? 50 gram. Then it will balance. Very good question.
वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन लास्ट क्वेश्चन इन फिगर ए यूनिफॉर्म बार ऑफ लेंथ एल एल मीटर सपोर्टेड एट इट्स एंड्स एल मीटर्स सपोर्टेड बाय एंड सो हाफ ऑफ द लेंथ एल बाय टू एल बाय टू सो फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट नाउ मिडिल एंड इन इक्विलिब्रियम इक्विलिब्रियम मींस टोटल there are two conditions for equilibrium f net should equals to zero total moment of force also zero or you can say net torque is zero so if you apply f net is zero the total upward force is r1 plus r2 equals to total downward force w this is one equation now from from moment of force from moment of force let's take this is a point of suspension or point of balance pivoted point now w is downwards r2 is upwards so this will cause uh, anti clockwise w will cause clockwise so if you balance this so this is l by 2 W equals to L into R two. In the same way, if you apply moment of force from the other side, let's say O dash. From O dash, W act downwards, R one acts upwards. So that's a L by two W downwards equals to L times R one, which acts upwards. So upwards here means what do you mean by upwards here? It's a clockwise direction. So by balancing R one equals to R two by equating these two equations, we can get R one equals to R two. So R one equals to R two means this is R one plus R one equals to W. So two times of R one equals to W or R one equals to W by two. So obviously R two also W by so like this we can solve the questions based on moment of force